Amen. Manure. Manure. (laughs) Urine. Sweat. Blood. The first life-giving breath the baby took and then the smell of his mother's skin. That's actually an email I received with a little bit of editing um, from Lynn Willis, who is the lead spiritual director for an organization called LEAD. This is a story that we know. know, Did you listen that time? (laughs) It's a story that we think we know, right? It's a story about our Savior who was born to us this night. But is it really a story that we know? Because you see, this story has 20 verses in it. The first five are background. The next two tell us of the birth. The next seven tell us about this angel's message. And the next five are about the response of the shepherds to the message that they were given. And if we really know this story, who are the characters in the story? Who are the characters? Shepherds? How many shepherds? It doesn't really doesn't say. There were shepherds watching over their flocks at night by shepherds who slept in the fields, right? Homeless shepherds. Who else? Mary and Joseph. An engaged couple who was pregnant. They're not married yet. Who else is in the story? Is, is there a person named Jesus in the story? No, there is not. When it came time for her to give birth, she gave birth to her firstborn son and laid, wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in the manger. The baby is not given a name. The characters in this story are Mary and Joseph, an engaged pregnant couple, homeless shepherds, angels, one who brings the message and then the whole cadre of them that join along to sing and a a newborn baby boy. Because you see, that is the birth. Two verses there in Luke chapter two, verses six and seven. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for him in the end. Pretty straightforward. It's a story about a woman. It was time for her to give birth. And she gave birth where she was. And she did what she had to. What isn't there? A beautiful snowy night, right? Because we all want a white Christmas. I guarantee you, though, when Jesus was born, it wasn't white. Because if it was, the shepherds wouldn't be in the fields with their animals. Because while the shepherds might be homeless, they're not stupid. They're going to be seeking shelter. If it's cold and snowy out. It's not a snowy night. There's no animals. There's no stable. There's no innkeeper yelling, no room! It's a man and a woman. And even in these two verses, it's just the woman and her child. Simply giving birth. Simply having a son. It's a very humble and private moment. It's nothing to write home about. It's nothing spectacular. It's nothing that should be making the 11 o'clock news. It's very humble. And as I said just a little bit ago, the boy doesn't even get a name. And then comes in the angels, right? All of this birth takes place someplace. And an angel out in a field to a bunch of shepherds comes and says to them, do not be afraid, for they were terrified. Our reading says, right? It says they saw the angel and they were terrified. Actually, what the verse there says is they feared a great fear. 
Luke wanted to make it so impactful for us to understand how scared they were. He actually used the verb for fear and the noun for fear. It says, and they feared a great fear. They were shaken in their boots because they were afraid. But the angel says to them, do not be afraid. But here's the other thing we have to remember. The word for fear also means reverence. So maybe if they were so afraid, they fell down on their faces and they were reverencing this angel who'd come to give them a message. And maybe the angel is saying, stop, not stop being afraid, but maybe the angel is saying, stop reverencing me and listen to this message because it's not about me. It's not about how this happens, but it's all about the message. Because this message is greater than anything that we could ever possibly imagine. Because the message that the angel gives to the shepherds. One has been born for you in the city of David. Today, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Did you hear that? I said just a little bit ago that the boy was wrapped in cloths, laid in a manger, and not given a name until the angels go to see the shepherds in the fields. And then the angel names the boy Christ, the Savior, our Lord. In our version of it, it said the angel said to the to the shepherds, who is a savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord and Messiah means Christ. And moreover, these angels giving this name to these humble shepherds out in this field who no one would take or believe anything that they said. The angels give the name of our newborn savior to them. It's humble. In the name dropping that Luke does at the beginning, in the time of Quirinius, the governor, when all of these people were in power, these angels come to these humble homeless shepherds and tell them that a Savior has been born for us. And He's laying in a manger in a humble little feeding trough in Bethlehem. And this is how you'll know how to find Him. And they go to find Him. And they pay him homage. And that's what Jesus wants for all of us to do this night. Because you see that poem that I started out with, beginning, it's called The Fragrance of Christmas. It's written by Lynn Willis, the lead spiritual director at, at the company called Lead. And here's the actual version that she sent out to us. Manure, urine, sweat, blood, The first life-giving breath Jesus took. And then the smell of His mother's skin. Jesus meets us where we are. Emmanuel. May you embrace the raw, amazing story of the Incarnation this year. Unwrapped, untidy, with all of its dank and sharp and acidic edges. And in thanks and praise and wonder, know that Jesus meets us where we are. Emmanuel. Because God decided that it was time for Him to come. And in an inbreaking of an incarnation, He came to be one of us. To live among us and to show us how to live. To know how life is with its ups and downs. Because some of us are here to hear that Christ was born. And to live out the joy that we've been feeling all this year long. And some of us are here because we haven't seen one inkling of joy all this year. And all we want to see is this baby coming. And telling us that everything is going to be okay. But you know what? Life is going to stink sometimes. But Jesus is always going to meet us where we are. Because that's what God does. He comes into the midst of everything and lives with us and walks with us. 
And that's what this night is about. About a gift of a Savior born in a manger. About a gift of a God who couldn't stay away from His creation. About a gift of a brother who walks with us through everything that we go through. Because God knew He had to come. And God was ready to enter our world. And God did so in a most unconventional and strange way. To give us the greatest gift that is truly a one-size-fits-all. 